you mentioned your kids and I, um, again, stalking you on the, the gram and you were very, very vocal. I know, I know about black maternal health and taking care of black mothers. Um, Mm -hmm. and you shared a story that was, that was pretty shocking to me because I'm under the impression if you're recognizable, they won't be so bold, but Time and time again, I hear that. Serena Williams shared her story. My friend Allison Felix shared her story. These are Mm -hmm. world-class athletes who Mm -hmm. have access and means, Mm -hmm. who talked about how they had to demand their rights as they were giving birth. Mm -hmm. Tell us your story, if you don't mind. Um, So I had a very, um, very, very healthy, very healthy pregnancy, like almost a boring pregnancy in that sense, you know. and, you know, I was seeing sort of a, a traditional OBGYN um, who wasn't in attendance at my actual birth, which happens a lot. That continuity okay. is often missing. And, um, but the literally the moment we walked into the hospital, everything, all the health and all the well being just went out the window. Oh. And my birth plan, our birth plan was not followed. I was coerced. And, I, and, you know, coercion, what does that mean? In this context, it often means when you're in the throes of labor, being asked again and again and again and again and again and again if you want, you know, interventions that you don't need and that aren't in your birth plan. So for me, that was the epidural. I was asked a million times if I wanted to have an epidural until finally I relented and you know, because they make it sound like this is what you need and this is what, um, and, uh, it, it was just my, my birth room became an absolute circus. Um, mm. I, um, um, actually a woman in Texas recently sued for this. I didn't even think that, you know, I could do that. I was going through so much of my own stuff, but, um, they actually, pushed him back inside me. He was crowned for many hours. And, uh, and we, why did they do that? That's a good question. Um, Are you... there was, there was a doctor who put his forearm on top of me and was, and stood up onto my bed and was like squeezing down on my stomach, almost like I was a bottle of toothpaste. And, um, we ended up, I ended up, um, having an emergency C-section and my son ended up being in the NICU, a very a perfectly healthy baby in ended up being in the NICU for four days. And the, um, uh, the head doctors at the, at the NICU, you know, um, said that it was, it, his, his kind of, his complications were a result of the traumatic nature of his birth. Um, so I went through a year or two and so did my husband of just being, I mean, if I I remember when we got home, we were just, you know, the, the, the trauma that we had experienced, we didn't even know what to do with it. I didn't, I didn't know at that time. I, I didn't know about reproductive justice. I didn't know that we were dying. I didn't know about the incredible morta- mortality rates in this country, the rates that incredibly high rates of C-section in this country. I didn't, I didn't know all of those things. And I just, I thought I didn't even cry. I, I thought I, I didn't know what had happened and I didn't even know it was bad. I, I knew nothing. It was just survival. And, you know, when we left that hospital, we left in the middle of the night. It was the middle of the night because I was like, we mm. have to get out of here. They're never going to let us leave and they're going to keep doing things to us and we have to leave. And my husband, he's wow. a professor and I don't know what that language, he's an English professor and he spoke, it was English, but all my words were four letters. And he said something that sounded like gobbledygook and somehow got us out of there. Um, and it was over time you know, working with a nursing consultant who asked, well, what happened to that? And when I saw the look on her face, I realized, oh my God, this was really bad. It, 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 and, and even still, 
a year or so later, or no, two, two and three years later, I was invited by Black Mamas Matter Alliance to talk about my nursing experience because I had been um, open about that on my Instagram. Um, and while I was there, I was in a room of, you know, Black midwives and doulas and 300 or so um, really people at the forefront of this of this movement. And I realized I was I was actually I was a cu- I was two months pregnant and mm. I was terrified. I didn't know what I was going to do because I didn't want to go to the hospital. I didn't want that again. And I realized I was in the room with the people who had the answers. And then that's when my education began. And that's when my healing began. And that's when I started to talk about it. And then I wrote I wrote an op-ed that I um, gave to Essence and asked them to put out um, because, you know, what we don't know in this case can kill us. How Also though, the answers are out there. <laughs> Like there are people doing this work. There are ways. But, th- th- there are ways to receive respectful care. Yeah. There are ways, and there yeah. are people, and and so it's changed my whole life. Like I went from being completely traumatized to um, really becoming radicalized, and 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 almost finding my tribe in this in this movement, and. Um, I've always had a political social justice kind of bent to me and this just ripped the you know tore the 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 bars off the cage for me personally because it's really where so much of the isms collide you know when you mm-hmm. think about oppression when you think about what it means to oppress a group of people and what 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 um what the methodology is in that um, what could, you know, birth, how a child comes into this world, mm. the connection with the mother and the father wow. or, the, or the birthing person, or I should say, and the birth, you know, birthing people. It's been going on for a very long time. I mean, this is, this is, mm-hmm. these are, these are, mm-hmm. these are methods and ways of, of treating us that have that are have existed during slavery and have kind of morphed and much like the criminal justice system, they've kind of morphed and taken on different names and forms over time. Um, but yeah, that's what this is. And, and, you know, they, they almost killed me and my baby. <laughs> and, and, and I just, I don't want anybody to experience what I experienced. Or at worst, you know, lose more mothers. Mm. Wow. Wow. Allison and said me, the same uh, thing. She thought she was going to die. Yeah. And I'm going to, and, and I'll say something about this that, that's, that's really important for people to understand. It's, it's. Indigenous women also have very similar, um, indigenous birthing people have very similar um, rates and experiences as well. When you are in your hospital, when you're in that gown, none of this matters. You, you a black woman in, you're just a black woman going through labor. They don't. I don't care who you are. You're just another black woman. Who are you? But who are you? And to be honest, and to be honest, who should I be? Who do I you need to be? be? Yeah, you don't, don't need to be anybody. To, You're right. I shouldn't need to be anybody. To give to, fair treatment. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But but that's the way that's the way things are. And not in just in this country, but very much so in this country where it's like, oh well, I can buy well, yeah. better treatment, you know, or I can buy my freedom. I can buy equality. Nah, NASA. That's a West Indian. No, sir. <laughs> no, you can't. Doesn't work. No, no, it doesn't. Not not at the not at the most important pivotal moments in our lives, junctures in our mm. lives. You know, when my teenage sons decide when they're teenagers and they want to hang out with their friends. It's not that's not that you don't buy it. That, that's not those you can't buy it then. 